First question is from Anthony Otto. What are some tips for improving your bench press or other lifts without a spotter? Oh, good old bench. And I used to I used to think I needed a spotter yeah. with bench press all the time. That's because I would train to failure so often that you know you you miss which rep is failure, and then that's it. You're stuck. Right. You just didn't want to be left in the situation where you got to roll the bar down your stomach down, and then just totally smash. Your I just kids. wanted to put some forty fives on there, and I couldn't do it without help. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what what you want to know what's funny? I know we're going to answer this question, by the way, but this is this is something interesting. The, the early days of bench press. In fact, you could see this in pumping iron. The bars on the bench press that held the barbell were close together. So you would grab the barbell on the outside of the bars, right. which meant you couldn't load one side at a time. So it literally was designed for people to load both ends at the same time. So it's like they literally designed it originally for- So you needed two people. Yeah, Doug remembers, right, Doug? I do. Yeah. You know, we, I got those uh, got. weights at Sears, I think it was back in the day. They were like concrete and plastic. Yeah, plastic. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I bought a bench with Sand these two ones. very narrow uh, yeah. bars, and I put that thing on there, and the thing was so unstable. It was a disaster waiting to happen. Now, were the were the commercial gyms like that, too? Because yeah. I know that's like if you were to – if you just bought a – at home bench mm. set up just a couple two decades ago it was like that yeah no the original ones were eventually i mean very quickly though they figured out oh if you put them on the outside it's it's much more stable you know what i used to do with those doug is because i had the same problem is i would move the barbell way over to one side so i could load mm -hmm. one side then load the other side and then slide it over it was like this whole pain in the ass <laughs> all right so let's let's answer this question right so bench press here's a general piece of advice and then i'll give you something a little bit more advanced and specific First off, one of the best ways to increase your lifts is to do them very frequently. But there's a caveat with this, which is you can't do them super hard very frequently. So in other words, let's say you want to improve your bench press. Maybe once a week, you have your traditional hard bench press workout. And then you can bench press another three days a week, but you're not going as intense. You're either focusing on speed, so you're going explosive with the push, mm -hmm. or you're focusing on form and technique, or you're doing tension to where you're yeah. holding it at the bottom right above your chest maybe that's a, a sticking point so basically frequency lots of practice uh but again modify the intensity and then the second piece would be this is something i discovered much later on it's a great great tool is variable resistance so like adding resistance bands to the bar so that the bar gets harder the further away you push it uh from your body which makes it harder where you're stronger that's an advanced technique, but it's one of yeah. the best ones I've well, used. We kind of covered all the bases, but um, in, in terms of uh, your sticking point and, and kind of focusing on the weakest part of the lift and generating more force within that, uh, and this is this is something that a lot of power lifters uh, are known to, you know, focus on to really get them through and, and progress, uh, you know, past some of their limitations. But you know, staying there and like doing pause reps where we're squeezing down, we're we're generating more force in that low position of the yeah. bench, uh, really makes a massive difference. And just like increasing the grip strength and 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 control uh, will add more security and stability uh, within that that exercise itself too, which will then allow you to, you know, uh, shuttle more force and, and increase your strength. So I feel like these are all kind of generic answers. And the, the truth is, this is really a, a depends situation always, because, right? yeah, and it is always right. But like, I'm listening, to you guys give tips. I'm thinking to my, I'm going through my head of like my, like my journey of like bench pressing and like, um, there were uh, very pivotal moments in in that journey where I saw leaps, right? So like one of the first leaps in my bench press was actually moving to high reps. I never moved to high reps. Like I literally- Just was, changing the phase. Yeah. Right. I was a kid who trained in the, you know, six reps was to build muscle. Everything that I read was around there. I wanted to get stronger. I wanted a heavier bench press. So it made sense that I was lifting these low reps to do that. Uh, but simply moving to the 12 to 15 rep range, which I thought was only for people that wanted to get lean back then, my bench press shot up. Mm -hmm. Another one was I talked about uh, uh, on the show earlier about not going past 90 degrees. I was yeah. never doing anything like that. Getting really good at really deep body weight dips mm -hmm. uh, made a difference. I've talked about on the show before um, 
getting good at my incline bench. For many years, I neglected incline bench because I was terrible at it. And again, I just wanted to get good at a flat bench press because that's what we all compared. When someone said, what do you bench? No one says what they incline bench. They say what they flat bench. And so I just wanted to get good at that. So there was a huge, huge discrepancy in my weight that I moved on incline versus flat bench. So I made it one year a goal to get just good at incline and in getting really good at incline ended up increasing my yeah. bench significantly. So it, it really does depend on what you potentially are neglecting. Now, you guys gave good tips for like sticking points, uh, added resistance with bands and chains if you've never used some of these things. But I feel like those are all things if you've already done all the stuff that I've mentioned. Like if you have if you haven't addressed your programming and, and, and if you're neglecting good exercises that really build the strength. Like if some people uh, think that they want to get a good barbell bench so they don't ever fuck with dumbbells. Yeah. It's like, I, that was another thing. That's I, a big I, I really got good at dumbbell uh, benching and that carried over into my barbell yeah, bench press. independent loads. Yeah, no, there's, there's lots of different things that we're just kind of, you know, spraying spaghetti out there. And like you pick what might make the most sense in terms of, uh, what you can apply that maybe you're neglecting within your programming or you're not addressing things. Like for me, my limitation was I would get shoulder pain, I'd get impingement. And so my shoulder wasn't tracking uh, properly. And so I had to address that mobility wise and add more rotation, add more of those uh, type of drills to add security in my shoulder, which then provided uh, more of a stable uh, situation where I could, I could load my body signaled that, Hey, everything's accounted for. So I can now apply more force, which was huge. And then the other, uh, you know, thing that I noticed that, uh, drove a lot more strength was focusing on leg drive. And so that was another thing that provided, uh, a lot more, uh, rigid security throughout my body. I was able to distribute more force and get my, my body more, uh, involved, uh, past just my upper body, my torso, uh, you know, including that, that leg drive and that, that tension and strength that I could summon from that, uh, increased my bench as well. You just just named another one that was a big leap for me was uh, when I was introduced to like priming and understanding how important that was before going into the lift. So I too was. Uh, that's by the way, that's an easy way to add like a right rep away. on almost everybody's bench press. Right, right away. Like just getting myself into the, the proper position. So I had this tendency of the shoulders always rolling forward when I started to, you know, do like a band row or prime my upper back right before so I could hold myself in that retracted position when I go into bench that made a huge difference so I feel like there's a lot of things that you should kind of check and then Sal you mentioned another huge leap for me frequency you want to get good at bench press you want to get good at anything and you only do it once a week do it two or three times minimum of a week just practice it and don't go to failure on it practice get good at that movement right so if you want to get good at the bench press strength is as much as uh, of a skill as it is your muscles contracting harder that's right so and that's what it is you're practicing the skill of a lift and you just get better at doing that lift justin you mentioned leg drive i want to emphasize that for a second cuz that one made zero sense to me for so long. It does to a lot of people, yeah. I like, never what? understood. I'm like, you're on a bench, you're pressing with your arms, you're doing nothing with your legs. What the hell does driving your legs into the floor and tensing up your legs have to do with the press? And people are like, oh, you're more stable. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess, but really what's going on? I don't know. Then I realized, oh, you're just your CNS fires harder when all of it fires yeah. versus when There's just There's an piece irradiation of it. effect. Yeah, so like the example I always give is if you squeeze something as hard as you could with your right hand, but had to keep everything relaxed, including your face, and then you tried that again, but allowed yourself to tense up your whole body, you'd see like a 10, 15% increase mm -hmm. in strength. So when you're pressing off of a bench, driving into the floor and tensing up your legs and your lower body just creates more of a central nervous system firing signal and just allows you to press more. Here's another one. Now, some exercises have a lot of carryover to other exercises. And so sometimes just getting good at something else, and you mentioned some of them, Adam, like dips and incline presses. Here's one that's not so obvious that has tremendous carryover to the bench press. It's actually one of the exercises that probably, in, in my experience, again, this is general, so everybody's different, but generally speaking, has some of the best carryover to the bench press. Overhead, overhead press. press. Overhead press. You, If you're stuck at your bench press, yep. Sometimes, and I've had, I've done this before, where I didn't even focus on my bench. I focused on my overhead press, and then 
right away would see a game. And not a press. not a bodybuilder military press, a full full range of motion. Yeah, down over, to the upper chest. Overhead over. press. You're right. I mean, another great one. You get good at that. I remember that. Getting good at that carried over into my bench press. So I don't know. There's a lot of things that we just listed off, and I think the thing that you neglect the most out of all the ones that we said – I would say probably, and and by the way, even though you guys gave chains and bands first, I actually think you check the boxes on all the other oh, yeah. ones. If your before. programming sucks, that doesn't matter. Right. Like if you're not yeah. doing frequency, you're not doing the exercises that we talked about, you're not manipulating rep ranges at tempo we didn't address. Yeah, you're, or you're training there. too hard or overtraining yeah. or whatever. Shoulders aren't tracking properly, not yeah. stabilizing. Hit all those. And then if you've checked all those box enough consistently, then playing with cool tools, I think, like we mentioned, I think are, are you know what's funny? Value. If you're watching this right now, uh, try this. I bet you at least 50% of the people watching this will increase their bench press by one rep or five pounds by doing this following, and it'll happen right away. Prime your shoulders with either a prone Cobra or maybe like a, a, like a suspension trainer W or something like that, right? Do some of that prime and connect, then go bench. This, it's the strangest thing. You'll all of a sudden see that small increase in strength right away. You didn't build more muscle. All you did was turn things on differently and get things to move a little bit better. So I, I, I dare everybody to try that. I bet, like I said, fifty. I would, I would bet about half of the people watching this would see their their bench press go up by you know five pounds. That was one of my Friday fitness tips, like I don't know, a month or two ago. I, I agree. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.